Lindsay here, The Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to share a tour of my studio with you. And I just want to start by disclaiming that my studio is not perfect. It's not as pretty as a lot of the ones you might see on Pinterest, but it meets my needs. And um, I think when you're looking at your space, whether it be a card table in the corner of your guest bedroom or a whole entire room that you're using for your arts and crafts, you need to identify what your space is going to be used for. So for me, my space needs to be um, for filming, designing, and storage. So that's kind of a lot to take on. Your space might just be for creating. Your space might be for teaching classes and creating or teaching classes and storage. You have to kind of pick and choose your priorities and then make your space work the best as it can for your needs. So um, since I need storage and I need filming space, I've recently re like moved things around so that it can accommodate that better. Um, you may be aware from some of my recent videos that I've switched to um, doing a three camera setup and um, because of that I needed to shift things around so that I could kind of stand like right here, have my main camera in front of me filming my table, have um, my hand cam to the side of me, and then when I look up to my face cam, which is what I'm filming on right now, I can do that all from being in one space. So that really worked out for me. So because of my camera being set up here, I needed to add some light over there. I needed to make sure behind me wasn't a complete mess. And um, so I kind of had to hide some storage, make some things look pretty, but also be very efficient so that I can um, create videos at the pace that I like to create videos, which is daily. And I actually do some work for some other websites. So um, I'm really, I'm really putting out a lot of content and my space has to work for me. I do this as a job. It is my living. So therefore, I probably have a lot more things than the average crafter or artist. Um, and I also teach classes. So um, so I have a lot of supplies that I need to find homes for. So your space might not be as packed as mine, um, but maybe you can get some good ideas on how to store your things um, just by seeing the different ways that I do it. So I do have uh, videos on all sorts of different ways to store all the different things. I'll put that playlist in the video description so you can check it out. But I'm basically going to show you what's new and, a bit, and, a, and more of an overview of my room. When you walk into my studio, um, right here, kind of just on the entryway, and this is just a corner of my basement, it's not finished or anything, so it's not really even a room, I have this big shelf of wooden stamps, and I picked up that shelf at a yard sale from a, a lady who owned a stamp store that was just getting out of stamping. I really regret not buying more than one, because it was only $5, but I have all my wood-mounted stamps except for sentiments on that shelf, and my little trash can is right next to that, so I don't have to take up precious floor space in my room with that. I have my wheel stamps on this little board that my husband made for me. We took a, a calendar holder and just um, hammer nails through the back and that holds my wheel stamps. And it's really great because I can kind of look in the side and see what I have and grab what I need. Next to that, I have a bunch of the plastic containers that used to be behind me on the wall. Um, you could see behind me where I was just standing. And it just held, holds like acrylic mediums, acrylic paints, oil paints, all sorts of uh, things like that, liquid watercolors, bulky, messy things. So I like to have plastic storage for that. Um, and then I've got some of my cheap acrylic paints that I use for um, craft projects and jelly print making. And then I've got some other larger storage uh, shelves there where I can hold big bulky things. So one of the changes I made with my studio this week is I actually shoved the um, kind of nine drawer units from Target that I have a lot of my supplies in that also serve as the ends of my main table. I shoved them back. So now I just have this small corridor. I used to stand back here and work, but um, I, since I now have the three cameras set up, I need to be standing in one spot, the same spot I do my um, uh, kind of intros and outros and working. And under there I have my sewing machine right there in the corner. I have just a crate of miscellaneous things and um, a couple wooden paint boxes, one for oils, one for watercolors, a crate of duct tape and school supplies, leftover packaging in that basket that I use for palettes, and um, then the other stuff we'll see when we go around the table on the other side. And then I can still walk down there and get into my drawers where I have ribbons, embellishments, found objects, papers. Um, I can get to all of that stuff just from walking through here. I have enough room to do that. Not enough room to walk through there with my tripod, which I'm kind of holding right now, but, uh, but enough to, to get around as I need. I didn't want to waste any space over there. I have tins of watercolor pencils. I've got a big folder of stencils. I've got powder, watercolor powders, um, and then all my scrapbook papers, jelly plates, all that sort of flat stuff is uh, stored on those shelves, and it's really, really handy. In this corner, I have totes of yarn and felt and probably I'm allocating a little too much storage for the amount of knitting I actually do, so I might need to look at that and maybe de-stash some yarn. And this is new. This is a um, 
three drawer organizer from not three drawer swirly organizer from harbor freight and i have um, lightweight things on it it's not very heavy duty just to let you know um so i have my ink blenders my color dusters up there i have foam blenders and the color box stylus stuff uh, in there and various sponges that I use a lot, pen pastel sponges, um, some more foam, color box, moldable foam, masking fluid, sponges, refill blades and nibs and stuff for my pens and uh, adhesives and salt for watercolor and just, you know, it's just a bunch of odds and ends that I actually reach for quite a bit so I just wanted to make sure they're handy and under there, I, that's actually on a computer monitor stand and then I have like odds and ends under there such as like lipstick and headphones and things like that that I need um, sometimes when I'm filming and then I've just got a tray there with some often used tools from brushes to crayons, just different odds and ends that I happen to reach for a lot. And then I've got my marker racks within reach, so whenever I'm standing and working I can easily grab a marker uh, for when I'm doing card making tutorials. Now over here I have, um, well I do have a cabinet back there, on top of the cabinet that's actually a sandpaper display that I recycled, um, that's all my neutral card stocks, and then in the cabinet below it's all my, all my colored card stocks. So it's still nearby, paper land, patent paper land, so I can grab all that stuff at once. So I try to organize things in the manner that I use them. And then I've got some ribbon up there um, in the foam core display I made, I do have a tutorial for that on my channel as well, and that should be in the storage playlist that I link below. And this is Die Cut Central. Let me back up a little bit so you can see it. I apologize if I'm talking fast. Um, I, I am talking fast and I apologize. Uh, I got my Big Shot die cutter, which is like eight years old, maybe 10, it's really old. Um, it was like the first um, version of the Big Shot. And then I've got my thick dies in this like little shoe organizer thing back there, a couple alphabets and uh, some just some general shapes that I use a lot. And then my cutting pads and spacers. And um, those bins up there have flowers in them, and they were 25 cents a piece at brown and white paper when they went out of business. I also keep my letterpress supplies here in that silver bin down in the bottom right hand corner. Then I have my background stamps next to it because they just seem they're just handier to have in a big box like that rather than in binders for me anyway. Next to that, I've got stamp sets that have matching die sets. I don't have many of them, they're just in a clear shoe box. And then I have my embossing folders in a divided wine box. In the pink tote is just letterpress paper. Then I've got my clay machine, a candle, warmer, um, some of the, oh, these are those cool Stampenda stamps that have like the stencils with them. So um, right now they're all together in their original formation. I might divide them up and put my foam stamps with foam stamps. And I don't know, they have a rubber stamp that matches the foam stamps. So I kind of want to keep them together. So again, unsure, too many things. And then I've just got my regular thin dies in that shoe box. Again, I don't have a ton of them. I just invested in the Brother Scan and Cut. So um, I can pretty much stamp and scan anything I want. And it's fantastic. I actually finally scanned and cut something and I've had it for like three months. A little embarrassed about that, but it works great. Thank goodness because I'm sure my warranty is over or my uh, whatever the the time that you can return something. So under there is my Cricut Expression which I use with Scal2 software to cut anything from my computer fonts and whatnot and then I do have a gypsy where I have all my cartridges loaded and I lent my my small Cricut and all my cartridges to a girlfriend. Um, I have a laminator and laminating pouches in there and then this is just like I got my postal scale. I don't often ship very much stuff because most of my sales I do in person. Sorry about that crazy light there. Um, oh see that's the you know looked under the skirt see like the truth behind the madness here. So I'm gonna have lights everywhere to light up the background when I'm filming just so that it's not a big ba black hole here. So that's why I have that light there because I was just uh, filming. So you get to see a little behind the scenes there. Um, there's my dress form which which is really handy if I'm making costumes or clothing. I usually have it covered unless I'm filming just to keep the dust off of it. Up here is finished cards that need to be packaged for sale. Next to that, which I might move, that's all vinyl um, for like if I want to make decals or even make letter stickers or whatever. I don't honestly use it that much so I probably should dust it off and store it some other way. Uh, clay tools, molds, that sort of thing in there. And this is just um, some various clay things in there. And then behind there I have books and clay stuff and my clay toaster oven is way on the bottom. You can kind of peek in there. It's mostly just kind of junk storage that, you know, stuff I actually use, but it is kind of junky, so I don't really want to see it. That's kind of like the theme uh, under all of my hidden storage, and now I'm like just knocking things over. So there we go. Yes, I put that painting there to cover the, the butt on the other painting. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to show you some of my hideous storage. 
And under my benches, I have a lot of the stuff that is necessary, but I really don't want to look at. So in those clear bins down there, I have uh, framing supplies and packaging supplies. So it's not sexy, but it's necessary, so it's under there. And also there's like wax and my wax crock pots and plaster of Paris and all of that uh, unattractive stuff. And um, I just put this dresser down here. And I have kind of big bulky things in there, like my screen print stuff. I'm um, also often used things like watercolor cards and um, and printmaking cards and new products that I need to get tutorials out with. Um, you know, often grabbed items are in here, just like little odds and ends. Um, up top, I just brushes that I reach for often. And up there, I've got my pan pastels in their trays various books. <laughs> they, this could really be, everything is, is subject to being removed. Um, and up there is my canvases because they're light so it doesn't hurt to have them up there. If something happened and they fell they wouldn't hurt anybody um, but I don't think that would happen. And um, under my easel, my stand-up easel, I have this little uh, plastic rolly cart and I like it because I keep my watercolor supplies in there and a bunch of um, other often used supplies but it rolls out. I've got something on the floor here. I'm just gonna kick it out of the way. Um, it rolls out so I can actually put my palette on there so when I'm easel painting I can have a, like a little handy table where everything is within reach. Now over here I just moved the big blue panels so that you could see what's behind them and I have binders and binders and binders of stamps. I love rubber stamping, um, it's one of my favorite hobbies and um, I have a really hard time de-stashing my stamps. I like them. Um, I collect them. I love being able to lend out a set if somebody needs it. So um, these big blue panels there, there's three of them, they usually just go up and cover that. Uh, when I'm not using it, so I kind of have that fun nautical theme. I've got ink pads over there. Oh, that little box there is all jewelry tools. I don't do jewelry a ton, but um, but I like that because I can bring that with me wherever I'm going to work. I've got ink pads in a homemade foam core storage, and then I've got some more in a cassette, old cassette, wooden cassette box thing. And oh, my Stampin' Up! stamps are up there in CD cases, and I've just got some um, creative options bags up there for on-the-go project packaging, packing, storage. This is my jewelry area. Oh, there's my scan and cut. I just keep that over here next to my paper trimmer because I generally, I just stamp, scan it, cut it, and go on with my day. So it really doesn't need to be over in the die cut center because um, I don't use it with any of the things over there. And I've got just little cubbies with odds and ends, little odd embellishments and things like that. These are all jewelry making supplies. I'm not going to go into all of that because I do have other videos showing that. And if you remember the letterpress trays I used to have with my wooden sentiments, um, they were really taking up too much room and I clearly needed to move another shelf up there for binders. So um, I took all of those stamps and I put them in shallow um, acrylic frames and they're all up there right now and it's working out great. And then I've just got um, back stock up there pretty much. I've got my jewelry wire, but I also have um, like backup head pins and ear wires and things like that. I go through a lot, but I don't want to put them in my main jewelry um, organization, which is right there, my findings organization, because when you buy like a new pair of uh, package of ear wires, they don't always match the old ones, even if they're the same make and model. So I wait to use up my um, current stash before I empty more into my container. It just keeps everything matching and reduces waste. And this is where I keep um, a lot of uh, stuff like, well, as you know, I do a lot of work for Paper Mart, so I have their supplies in big crates um, so that I don't uh, mix them up with my other general mer merchandise. I can easily find stuff for a tutorial and keep it mostly to their products. I also have um, these, these are wonderful. They don't make them anymore, I don't think. They're made by Crop and Style. They're these shallow drawers and I have my calligraphy pens. Um, I also have UFOs. I do have some little stamps in there too. <laughs> Um, I have UFOs, like I'll make up when I go do resin, I'll make like a ton of pieces and then I will um, just store them until I'm ready to make with them. So I've got like a bunch of different little like resin um, charms and stuff that need to be used. Um, but that just kind of keeps them safe while I'm doing that. And I keep all my sprays and stuff like that, drawing inks in there. And then I've got my pastels in those containers up there and specialty paper in those. And this is just like templates I save. Like if I have interesting junk mail or, you know, something cool, a cool box, paper box, I'll just stick it in that folder because I have all my templates there. And just some, you know, odds and ends. They're not pretty, just 
you know, stuff I need to keep in store. And then I've got uh, wreath forms up there hanging from the rafters. I use the rafters a lot to my advantage. Um, I really like it because, so I've got tons of lights in here. You see that? But when you're filming, you really need it. And it's also uplifting to have all that light. And I use um, the daylight CFLs, so they're not very wasteful as far as electricity. And by using the joists, I don't have to have floor stand lights taking up a lot of space, which is really handy when you're working in, in a very full cramped space. Um, and I wanted to share this for Kelly Donovan because she asked me how I'm setting up my camera. So this is my table cam. So it's it's facing straight down onto where I film. And then I'm in that mug that I actually made myself out of clay. Um, and I stuck some floral oasis in there and a selfie stick. And that is my camera and my camera will film there and it will kind of be able to get under my hand when I'm working so that if my hand is blocking the view from the um, up high camera, right there I can switch when I'm editing to that camera and I can see how it all goes and I'm just kind of zoom over there that's where my tripod that I'm holding right now usually sits and films me standing up so um, I can just switch between those different angles when I'm editing and it makes it really easy so hopefully you enjoyed the studio tour if you have any questions go ahead and leave them in the comments below and um, thank you so much for joining me and that just about does it Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.